Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna talk about or actually talk about the introduction to BEAF which means the Bowers Exploding Array function. So this is a video that has been requested by many viewers for a very very long time and I kind of refuse to do it because for me I'm not extremely interested in this and also uh, to me, at least for myself, it's kind of difficult to understand it myself and also kind of difficult to explain. I know not to everyone, but at least to myself and of course to anyone that has a problem to understand the up arrow notation, this would be a lot more difficult, uh, actually even more complicated than the chain arrow notation. But again, this is just my opinion. Anyway, uh, this is probably the only video I'm going to talk about about the BEAF, so let's get started. So of course, first of all, you need to understand the up arrow notation, which of course I covered in many of my other videos. And of course, you can also look it up online yourself. I'm not going to talk about it uh, over here. So let's, uh, in order to understand the BEAF, first we have to understand something called the brackets. So basically this is the basic foundation over here. So A bracket and B. So this thing over here, of course, this is very, very straightforward. If you understand the up arrow notation, this basically means A up arrow, I mean with N up arrow B. So in other words, A bracket one B, it just equals to A to the power of B because it means one up arrow. Of course, one up arrow just means A to the power of B. And three bracket four, five, of course, it just means three with four up arrows, five. So, so far, so good. So next, now we're gonna try to increase the number of brackets. So of course we use one over here in the middle, but with two brackets, or you can say double brackets. So this thing over here, it equals to, I mean, this thing escalate very quickly. It becomes A bracket A bracket A da 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 with B number of A's. Of course, this is not all the A's. This one just goes, uh, I mean, counts until the middle A over here. So from here to the middle A has B number of A's. And then, of course, there's another um, almost exactly number of A's behind this. And this thing, uh, people call it a expanded to B and of course B is the number of layers including the outside and uh, this thing is called expansion uh, and expansion of course if you are a computer scientist um, this is not a primitive recursive function which means it cannot be programmed using only four loops and of course again B is equal to the number of A's plus one divided by two, as you can see over here. And now let's look at a quick example. Three, uh, double bracket one inside three. And this, of course, equals to using this rule over here is three bracket three, bracket three, bracket three, bracket three, something like that. Um, so of course you start from the middle. So three bracket three, three. Of course, using this rule over here, it means three with three up arrows, three. And then the outside, you just copy over here. So this one, of course, it means three with three, triple arrow, three, number of arrows, three. Uh, as you can see over here, it's not too difficult to understand. Of course, the number uh, inside the arrow is just, uh, inside the bracket it just means the number of arrows so of course here you can clearly see that it looks kind of familiar as g1 or the g sequence in grams number that means you can clearly i mean you can easily build grams number using just double brackets pretty straightforward so far 
And now, of course, why using one? Of course, you can increase the number in the middle here. You can use two, three, four, five, all the way. You can use Google, whatever. Of course, you can, you're going to get a very big number. So this thing over here, it looks, it equals to something like this. So the two becomes one over here. But again, there will be B number of terms over here. So this is, again, already big escalation between each step and now what about three brackets so three brackets it looks something like this i'm not gonna talk i mean read it out um and then now um again this is the rule over here um and again now i mean this is uh, of course ways takes a lot of time to write the brackets so of course we need to invent a simpler way to write the brackets which is this one so you can write a bracket one d b so d over here it means the number of brackets so this one expand it out it looks something like this i'm not going to read it out you can read it yourself so in other words a one four b it just means uh, four over here, of course, it means the number of brackets. So it, it equals to this thing over here, which has four brackets. Again, the number of brackets, I mean, increasing number of brackets will grow your function way quick, more quickly than increasing the number in the middle. So this is, of course, a very, very fast growing function. And um, of course, this one, you can change it to C. So A, C, D, B this form over here this uh thing already this of course this is a four argument function a b c d this is already as powerful as the chain arrow notation and we all know that i mean i talk about the chain arrow notation in another video it is a very fast growing function much faster than the regular up arrow notation However, of course, this thing over here for argument, it just barely scratched the surface of the BEAF. So now, of course, again, this is just a very surface. And then the next thing is the linear array notation, which of course uses this form over here. And of course, we need to make things uh, simpler in order to continue. So in this case, another way to write this in a simpler way is this form over here. So this thing over here is equals to bracket A, B, C, D. This is a new way to write your array notation. So of course, um, this thing over here, it just is equals to A to the power of B. So similar to the chain arrow notation. So anything behind the ones will be ignored. So cancel out. So it just becomes A to the power of B. And of course, you can uh, continue this step. You buy, uh, you can make your function grow even faster by adding more terms over here. Now this would be a five argument. This is a four argument. Of course, you can continue. For example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, blah, blah, blah. You can continue, of course, adding additional term would increase your function very, very quickly. And then, of course, we it doesn't stop over here. Next, you have the multi-dimensional arrays, which are basically written in this form over here, B and A. This thing is just equal to uh, a bracket with a lot of A's inside. And the number of A's here is equal to B, so there are B number of A's. So, of course, this is, it takes the form of this one. And now you have diagonalized everything that we have done so far. And this thing over here has the growth rate of around uh, this thing over here. So, omega to the power of omega. And, of course, we know that the uh, this is the fast growing hierarchy so the famous uh, g sequence from the grams number the growth rate is around f of uh, omega plus one and the chain arrow notation is around f omega square and of course you can see this is this thing over here already grows much much quicker than the chain arrow notation and of course it doesn't stop over here um, as you can see this thing uh, you can keep continue this thing over here by 
adding a subset over here so this to this and of course you don't have to stop here you continue uh, writing subset and then of course this one can be represented by b number of layers and then um, in this thing you can kind of write it like in this form over here b and one two a and then if you keep going this you will eventually reach the uh, tetrational arrays of course uh, just to let you know i skipped many 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 steps in here just to in order to reach the tetrational arrays and the tetrational arrays the growth rate is around f using the fast growing hierarchy is around omega to the omega to the omega so very fast growing function and of course you can keep building this and eventually you're going to reach the pentational arrays which is around f of um, omega with three arrows omega so again very very fast growing and then the next uh, level is called the sublesion arrays and then of course the next one is called the lesion arrays and um, actually uh, anything above the tetrational arrays there's no agree upon definition about that so they're all kind of you can argue that is a kind of ill-defined and the um, lastly I just want to mention the one of the biggest uh, number ever defined using the BEAF is called this thing over here I'm not gonna try to pronounce it and this thing over here of course um, it can be written this way it's defined by this over here and um, although this is a very very big number again just like what I said uh, anything above the tetrational array level has no agree upon definition so this one is not very clearly defined and therefore the exact size of this number is not very clear um, of course it's very big but nobody exactly know its size but of course since there's a clearly defined by some mathematical notation over here uh, precisely the BEAF so therefore it is clearly computable it's a computable function or um, number and therefore it is clearly certainly smaller than Rayo's number and it is also believed to be smaller than loader's number um, and of course it would be smaller than uh, let's say um, the busy beaver number for example busy beaver a thousand uh, most likely it's gonna uh, be smaller than that so anyway this is my quick video on the introduction of the BEAF so thanks for watching and have a nice day